I'm not sure. Okay, let's call this notice, uh, call this meeting of the rescheduled regular meeting of February 22nd, 2018 to order. This is the Ojai Basin Garan Management Agency. Today is March 14th, 2018. Let's all stand. Actually, let's do the uh, call to order, uh, roll call, and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. President Breen. Here. Director Finch. Here. Director Baggerly. Here. Director Johnston. Here. Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe in the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, those wishing to uh, make comments need to fill a speaker card out. I currently have one speaker card in front of me. Um, let's go to item number three, uh, director announcements and reports. Uh, the mutuals would be me. I have nothing to report today uh, other than it's nice to see some water. I can tell you that Thatcher Creek, which runs through uh, our neighborhood, Sieta Robles, has been running for all week. And I went out there, and it's about 8 to 10 feet across and 4 to 6 inches deep. And that is a rare sight coming through our neighborhood, and it's nice to see that. It must be a broken pipe. There's not that much. <laughs> uh, I, what I can tell you is... It my property, there is nothing running yeah. in Thatcher Creek. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be a problem. Uh, uh, upstream of you about a half a mile. Yeah, I, I know. Can you I, call that in? <laughs> <laughs> what I can tell you is that right before the storms got going, Sam Hill came into our neighborhood and excavated about four feet of debris from the back of our neighborhood uh, on Long's property all the way through Vereda and about 40 feet past Vereda. So what, I have, what we have right now is... A, literally a settling pond that's maybe a hundred feet long, maybe four to five feet deep, where that water's settling in. So as more water kind of trickles in, it kind of kind of still oozes down. Well, so I, I, I'm happy for you. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything. Well, uh, it's jumping out of the ground right in our neighborhood. <laughs> it's milky, milky chocolatey, and but it's the, definitely there. And I and having lived there for 25 years now, it's it's not something we see a lot of. So uh, I can say that we are seeing that right now. Uh, Ojai Water Conservation District, anything to report? No, no meeting, nothing to report. All right. City of Ojai, anything to report? Nope. Okay. Um, we did make a presentation to you uh, of your last meeting. Right. And okay. uh, I tried to keep it in 10 minutes. I apparently went 12 minutes, as I was told. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing else from the city? To the chairman, so. There it is. Nothing else from the city then? No. No. <laughs> okay. Casitas Water District, anything going on over there you want to talk about? Well, uh, the lake is at 34.6% full, um, depending on your perspective. <laughs> um, the elevation is 489 feet, 0.29, which represents 82.202 acre feet left in storage. Our average um, distribution from the treatment plant is 12,000 acre feet. And let's add another 5,000 to that for evaporation. That means with plus or minus five years of water left in the, in the lake. Okay, and what was the acre feet again, if I could ask? Uh, um, the total in storage? Yes. 82,222. All right, and I wrote that as 82, and I go, 82 can't be right. 82,222. Russ, I had a question, if you wouldn't mind. Trying to. At what point? Even though there's 32% left, 34% left, at what point is it just done? Okay, because somebody asked me that question the other day. Obviously, if it's at zero, it's done. But this guy was the actually the hydrologist. And he was saying, you know, I, I can tell you, it ain't gonna work at three percent or five percent. I mean, do we do you guys know where that number is? About 70,000 acre feet. That's uh, about when it's it, done. Yeah, okay. you lose head, and it's hard to pump it uh, back <laughs> into the. the uh, so 7,000 would be Mike, uh, about 10%? Oh, I don't know. Don't make me do math. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then from the 82,000 acre feet you have right now, the answer is at 7,000 feet, it's hard. You, the water's not coming out of the lake. Yeah. That's a big move. When are you going to get that? Five years. Okay. Oh, so that's the calculation. Yeah. Um, anything else about the lake specifically? 
It's a beautiful spot. You, right. you know, make your reservations. Um, there's no, 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 no skin touching, no water. <laughs> We have a report also here uh, regarding the wells uh, and the statuses on those. Uh, I have it here in front of me. Do you want to go ahead and read those, that, that information into the record, Russ? Um, let's see. What do you, which do you want? Uh, we've been. I have asked for these uh, d for this report to be cumulative. So we are looking at the data from March 9th, or I'm sorry. Um, well, the most recent one is um, the 9th of March. Uh, 2018, San Antonio number four, the static level was 172 feet, the dynamic level was 340, the average flow was 190 gallons per minute. Anything else? Uh, well number six. Number six, the static was 233.6 feet, uh, dynamic was 305.2 feet, the average flow was 234 gallons per minute. Okay. At our last meeting, we asked a question about uh, what was what Casitas uh, was currently doing with those wells. You gave the impression that there might be some work being done on them. Uh, can you talk? Do we need to? I'd like to get a handle on what, what Casitas is doing with these wells in the short term and the long term. Is that something we should put on the agenda for a separate item and have someone talk to us about that? Yeah. Or what's the, what do you recommend for us to get a full understanding of, of if you're going to read how you want to maximize the production from these wells? Because the chatter I get is that there's something there's something else to maximize out of that for Casitas. Well, that's a legacy from Golden State. Uh, but we're, we've hired a consultant to do an evaluation of those wells, okay. all of them, so that we know what it is that we have to do. When we know what we have to do, that might be a good time for a discussion. Okay, so the right now, then, the answer is Casitas has a consultant they've hired. You're going to get recommendations from that consultant, and at that point, maybe there's the appropriate time for the consultant to come in and say, hey, here's what we're thinking about doing with those wells. I think that's what I just said. All right. But between now and then, there's nothing else going with the wells other than you're using them as, and, as they currently are brought to you, and this is what we're seeing out of them. Well, other than finding funky things that Golden State um, did to keep them running in a, in a bad, bad condition, uh, we're fixing what we can, yeah. All right. Just wanted because I, I was. I just wanted to make sure that I understood exactly where we were going with that. Mm -hmm. Do we have an idea of what then is when you said between now and then? Is that in this? When we, in this when we get the evaluation report, Johnny. Right, but is that is there an estimated time when that might occur? Yeah, but I don't have the Gantt chart. Oh, okay. I'll tell you. All right. I had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, Russ. Does that mean that uh, Casitas Lake is still supplying 30 percent of the Ohio water at this time until you get that uh, work done by the consultant? Of course. But as I understand it, that's historically the case anyway, regardless of the consultant fixes, the, regardless of anything changes on that well, because he just has historically supplied 30% of the water for, for that area. Is that accurate? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, but what I heard the last meeting was Casitas is no longer going to do that. Well, we're trying to evaluate how we can better utilize the well field right. so that we don't take water out of the lake. But that's, that's give, really give us some time, Eric. So the question was yeah. about the yeah, you're still going to get water until we can figure out how to maximize those wells. Okay. Um, while we're talking about this, real quick, who do have we? Are we using the spreading grounds? I, I know that they are fully permitted. Who's in charge of opening that gate, and how does that work? Does Watershed know? Protection District, and um, they couldn't use it this last time because it broke down. Well, and we didn't get a foot through the weir, and now it's not going through the weir; it's going to the west side of the. But it wouldn't have made it to the foot anyway. It's weird. That never mind. Okay. So right now, then, even with the rain we've had, that selling is not being utilized. That's we correct. We haven't met the met the, the measure met the level. All right. When we meet the level, we'll know about it. Because when we get, who 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 could tell us when? What's that? If if there's not too much sediment and crud in the in the water that's going into the into the screens mm -hmm. to plug it up, and then they have to go clean it. All right. And they've done that once. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Would you like me to? I actually asked Elizabeth Martinez this exact question, uh, and I got an email response from that. Have you gotten that email? I did. Okay. Have you shared it with the rest of the board members? Okay, and the, uh, her email response was the problem was clogging. 
and they were trying to fix, a, in her exact words, we're looking at short-term and long-term fixes. All right. And um, she didn't mention the ins uh, sufficient flow. She mentioned it clogged when they tried to use it because there was so much debris in the flow. So I don't know exactly what the actual facts are. I just want, I'm only responding to maybe, maybe they should share her email with everyone. Sure. Yeah. And I talked to Jordan today, and he said that he was going to talk to her soon. Okay. The, the reason that I bring this up is that a senior candidate had asked me why it wasn't being utilized. Um, uh, so the reason it's not being utilized is it's clogging up. So that's the answer to that question. Well, and there has to be a certain level. Certain level. And it's one feet. It's one, one foot of flow under the, the uh, Grand Avenue Bridge. Um, in the notch. Yeah, in the notch. Within one. Wow, well, okay. There For you go. The city of Ventura. All right. Yeah. Uh, any other uh, director announcements, reports? All right. Uh, item four is a base and status report. Uh, uh, Jordan Kerr couldn't be here tonight, but I do have an email from him. I'll read into the record. Um, the valley floor has seen 6.6 .6 inches of rain to date since October 1st. This is a 39.1% of normal. Recent rains have increased infiltration capacity of some local streams by clearing out ash and fine material. We will have an updated water level data on the wells on the 29th of March through the end of February. Had water levels of 190.22 feet in the key well. Little change since December of 2017. Uh, so I suspect that with this rain, we're going to be seeing the uh, water table going up because even the small rains in January increased the table five feet. So uh, we've had more than the small rains in, uh, from January, so we should be seeing some movement on, uh, on that. Um, that's all we have on the basin report itself, unless there's a specific question regarding it. Okay. Also note that we, we have a little time limit tonight. Uh, we have to be out of here at 545 to a scheduling conflict with somebody who was previously in this, in this room, I believe, at 6 o'clock. Uh, anything that we don't complete now, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll carry over to our next meeting. Uh, public comments for items not appearing on the agenda. I have one public comment for an agenda item. Is there anything for a non-agenda item that anyone wants to comment about? There being none, we'll move on to the next item. Item six is consent items. Uh, we have a single consent item right now. That is approving the minutes of our meeting of January 25th, 2018. Mm -hmm. Those may be approved. Second. First and a second. May I get a roll call vote, please? President Two. Breen? Yes. Director Finch? Yes. Director Baggerly? Yes. Director Johnston? Yes. The minutes are uh, accepted as presented. Yes, sir. Um, I think just for protocol, and most agencies do this, we keep the, the president's um, vote last so that he can break a tie either way, okay? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that power. Yeah, you <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did. You had a question? <laughs> no, only a comment that yes, normally sir. it's random in order for the controversial issues not to always <laughs> fall to the same person. But, <laughs> but if Dan likes that, that's fine with me. So far, we have, uh, we, even though it was four of us, we could easily tie. We've all, always all been on the same page, and I appreciate that. Um, let's move then to our action items uh, item on agenda number uh, seven. A would be the treasurer's report for January and February 2018, budget spreadsheet, and the extraction charges by period. Um, let's see, get that in front of me here. The extraction charges by period is that new sheet I gave you. Yes. Does anybody have any comment, questions? Um, was there any trends here that we need to look at, Cece, that you noticed uh, in, the, in the numbers? John, is there anything that you've noticed uh, in these numbers? A lot more revenue than this time last year. Yeah, well, there, if there's going to be maintenance on uh, the San Antonio Creek Spreading Ground project, we can expect to get a bill from Watershed Protection District for our fair share one of these days. So that'll be coming. Okay, and our, and our fair share is already defined, so when that bill comes in, it, it is our fair share. Do I have to answer that? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it's written down somewhere. Um, any comments then on item number 7A? So I, I recall, I'm having a long day. I, do we have to accept these as a vote, or is these just items that we're uh, bringing in as presented? I can't recall what we did here. They're received and filed. 
received and filed and moved on? The action, the consent mm -hmm. items or the action items? The action items. They're, they're all taken separately. All voted on separately for acceptance? Yes. All right. Like I said, I've been a long day today. I apologize. Uh, entertaining uh, motions to accept item 7A as presented? So so moved. He'll move. Second. Can I get a... Well, if there the aren't any questions. The most important thing here is this extraction that we're seeing and we're finally catching up to ourselves here. You need a second? No, you got a first and a second. Can I get a roll call vote? Director Johnston? Yes. Director Baggerly? <laughs> yes. Director Finch? Yes. President Breen? Yes. Going on to item 7B, the annual report requirement associated with groundwater sustainability plan alternative due April 1st, 2018. Uh, the suggestion here is that the board direct John Monday to prepare the annual report requirement for the groundwater sustainability plan alternative. I comment on this? Yes, I would I encourage I, you to, please. I'd Thank like you. To ask you to amend that motion to, to uh, for this recommendation to myself and Jordan because it, it's going to take both of us to do that work. The, the reality is we're already working on it okay. because of the timing. And so mm -hmm. I think right now we're about 65% complete with it. Jordan's got some tables and graphs and things that need to be updated. I've updated several graphs and pulled a lot of information together from prior reports. So um, I just need to have Jordan take a look at it and get his work done. And we'll get it filed by the first week of April. Okay, that, my next question is, this is something that is not a multi-month pro project. This is a, I mean, you've been working on it, I know, extensively, but it's something that can be executed before April 1. Yeah, and, and this is going to be a, a quick and easy one this year. Um, I'm not sure it'll be set the precedent for the future reports, but at least we're going to get it done by April 1st. That's the goal. And then this next year we'll have time because the water year ends September 30. Uh, we can start pulling the information together in the fall and then get the report pulled together and submit it by April 1st in 2019. So um, this, this is pretty quickly this year. Next year we should have close to six months to work on it. Okay, and this is a plan that is not, it is a, you present it and it's done, it is not open to public, it, it's not open to public comment? How does that, how does that well, work? It's, when a we report, it's a report. Just a report, okay. Normally we, we, we would bring it to the board mm -hmm. and the board would review it and the public would have an opportunity and we'd bring it early enough so the public can comment. But it's a requirement on this, under the uh, uh, Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. Okay. And so annually you have to provide a report on water conditions within the basin by April 1st of each year. Okay. And so it's it's a lot of factual information. So it's it's I don't expect a lot of controversy on, on the document itself just because it's facts. And okay. Are we going to see the report before it's filed? If the, the goal was to have it to you, if we hold a board meeting at the end of this month on the 29th, we get it to you, but we're going to need you to authorize posting it by the 1st of April. Yeah. I have to post it on the Department of Water Resources website. Okay, so the appropriate action then would be tonight to pass in a motion to allow you to do it, then and then put it on the agenda for our next meeting for us to accept and approve it. Right. And then for you to file it on April 1, and then if we have other public questions about it, to maybe carry it through to another agenda item going forward, maybe we want to question us about it. Yeah, and I, I think it would be good to have the public look at it, at least you know, they have some thoughts about future reports. They'll okay. have 72 hours just like the board does. All right. Yes. All right. But I uh, guess what I'm saying is that just because we're kind of in a time crunch here and if anyone's got any questions, I want to make sure that we have the opportunity, even though it's been filed, there's nothing we can change in, 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 in you know, we can't go back and amend it, but if there's questions, I want to make sure we make the time for it, somebody to ask. But at least you get it filed. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going to get it filed. Sure. Right. And it's an electronic report, okay. and we will file it through the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act website through DWR. So we don't have to mail it to them or anything. It's just, just attached in the, in the system. Okay, so the chair, uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, John and Jordan, and I, I know that this got, both the names have got to be in there because they're the ones doing the work. But I hope that you design it so that um, future reports can just have the new um, facts and figures plugged into the report as a, a template that we can use every time. That, that's 
that was the goal in getting this together. There's a lot of language in there that's good for multiple years and past right. years. But we'll update the tables, we'll update the graphs and charts, and then there'll just be some additional pros on what happened between the prior water year and this current water year. Exactly. Okay. Okay, then we'll entertain a motion uh, to have John Mundy and Jordan Cure prepare the annual report requirement for the groundwater sustainability plan alternative that is due April 1st, 2018. I'll move. And second. The first and a second. First from Mr. Finch, second from Mr. Johnston. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Director Johnston? Yes. Director Baggerman? Yes. Director Finch? Yes. President Breen. Yes. Look forward to seeing that. All right. Um, we're moving right along here. Item 7C, which is the groundwater management plan. Uh, it is hot off the press. We were just presented the plan. I'm touching it and looking and haven't had an opportunity to read it yet. None of us have. Um, I have a couple of technical questions here. Uh, what is the amount of days when it says a notice for public comment, what, is it, what does that exactly mean? What do we have to do to make this so this available for public comment, and how long is that period? I think it's, it, I don't recall a, a number of days in the legislation. I don't either. And so I think, and you have to update your groundwater management plan every five years, as I recall. So I think you, you've got plenty of time to have the public review. I would recommend maybe 60 days. All right, so basically. All right, so what would happen here is that we'd leave it, uh, we would leave it open for comment for 60 days, and that means that we would come back to accept it and approve it <coughs> in um, not, this, not the end of this month, not the next meeting, but the one following that? You, what you might want to, uh, just suggestion, um, again, I don't believe it's required, you might want to have a hearing, and so when the public, maybe you have a hearing after 30 days, the public has an opportunity to comment in front of the board about the report, and then we've at least got another 30 days before you adopt it. All right, so we have a suggestion of being a special hearing that is not a normal meeting. That could be part of the board meeting. Part of the regular board meeting? Sure. All right, All right so we can make this an agenda item f at the meeting that is held in um, April, April uh, last Thursday of April, uh, not, not, notify it then, and then open it up for public comment at that point, and then approve it at the following meeting after that? In May. In May? Does that seem that like a, my suggestion. the schedule that we can work with? I, it's important that everybody, uh, just want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to say what they want to say about it from the public standpoint. And sure. it seems like there's plenty of opportunity and we're not ramming it, we're not forcing it into the next meeting. And we want to get out a notice that there's a public review that's opened as of probably within the next week. Okay, so then we're going to take this agenda item then, carry it forward to our next meeting, uh, open it up for public comment at that and notif notice it when we... Not at our next meeting. Well, uh, I'm sorry, at the, at the April meeting. Correct. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, because we, we do have a meeting later this month, right? Okay. Uh, and then it'll be open for comment then, and then we'll review it in May for final approval. <coughs> um, and, okay, well, then that's what we're going to do. I don't need any... Uh, and I, I left a message for Jordan today for um, a technique that I've seen used for other large documents. Instead of having to go to Dropbox for this entire thing, mm -hmm. have him cut it into um, chapters or sections um, so you can download smaller uh, files than the larger files. Um, it's only 44 pages long. Yep. How much smaller do you want it? Is this uh, it? Are there any bigger maps? Are there, um, is there anything else that's going to go with it? You can see graphs in here. So it's, yeah, it does. Okay, I, I just used to using. I'm, I'm I'm used to looking at 400 page documents, so this one this one looked manageable to me. <laughs> but if we want to make it smaller, certainly, yeah. You've probably got a faster CPU than Run I. Run with it. Uh, so how how would that? So you're going to talk to Jordan about about that and the best I, way to I present left him that. A message, oh, okay, right? all right. But Anything yeah. to make it easier for people to absorb, <laughs> download, and understand. Yeah. You know, we're we're all about it. Typically, we post on the website, but again, I'm not sure. That'll be directly on the website, or there needs to be a link that takes you someplace else, either Dropbox or something. Okay. We'll figure it out. All right. Um, item uh, 7D grant opportunities. Board to discuss grant opportunities. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I've got a, uh, I did have a 7F, 
But go ahead. You got a question? Just one, just real quick, uh, Dan. So when do you when do you sense you'll post it this week? If it's, if, if it's draft and ready, it should be ready for posting, right? Yeah, we're, we just got it. We'll get it posted as soon as possible. I would suggest posting as soon as possible, but, but you should get a notice in the local paper that it's available for public review. Okay. Okay, and uh, I will see you and I'll coordinate and make sure that happens. <clears throat> um, anything else, any other comments about the draft and how we propose to get it out into the public and, and on the items? We're good there? All right. Uh, grant opportunities. Um, I am remiss in not having brought to your attention that I attended a meeting uh, down with uh, uh, Supervisor Bennett and a host of other individuals, Mr. Uh, Mayor Johnson was there also, where we talked about grants that were available, uh, a way to work with larger parties to get those grants. Uh, I have been unable to attend either of the two follow-up meetings for that. There, there's a meeting on Friday. And I, there's a meeting on Friday, unfortunately, that, I, that I'm on the, I'm traveling, I won't be able to attend. Have, has anyone attended any of the last two meetings that can yeah, bring us I up have. to speed? Then yeah. I'll let you run with this, go. Uh, whoever. Well, well they haven't, on this. They haven't been presented yet. Um, we're going to hear about it on Friday. Okay, so at this point right now, it's just we're on Friday year, as you're gonna hear about what grants might be available and, and try and well, what we did hear before is the same thing that we're going to hear on Friday, and that was Regina Hirsch and her um, um, assistant or uh, employee um, with that little book of every, every okay. grant that's available. The city, I'm sorry, so the county did pass a resolution uh, that asked us to also sign on to that resolution as supporters of this project. The non-binding the non agreement. Right. To it didn't uh, get into our agenda item yet. I'm going to ask it to get onto our agenda item at the next meeting, and then we can discuss whether or not we want to officially sign that letter and be part of that. Because right now we're just kind of unofficially being in the meetings. We've not agreed to be part of an, any non-binding I guess non-binding is non-binding. We don't have to do anything to be non-binding. Well, it started out that there was We want to be good citizens and, you know, and, you know, sign our name up for, and, and, you know, a united front and all of that. Go ahead. Yeah, when it, when it uh, was first presented, there was no requirement that anybody do anything with it. just a statement of, the, right, just of a, what we were going to do. And then uh, a couple of the organizations there felt like they should go back to their board. And I know we took it to the city council. City council adopted it. Well, meet on Friday, if you, with or without uh, our concurrence, they will proceed. And uh, I think we all are of the same mind that uh, non-binding, if you didn't even have such a thing as an MOU, I mean, it's more sim <laughs> symbolic. Uh, we'll see what we, we learn on Friday when we Regina- You can see this is uh, also- Yeah, you, you both, you're on it too. So there's no, there's no, so there's plenty of consensus among the four of us then that that's an appropriate place for us to be, it's an appropriate place for us to listen, and anything we can get out but of it- We wanna know what's, you know, of course we're, we're, we're going for different reasons, we're representing different groups, we right. just stay informed. Okay. This isn't the only one out there, but it's a, it's a possibility. Okay, just wanna make sure that if there's an opportunity, we, and again, I, I should have been yeah, of those. Uh, I'm glad you two were there because I yeah, just. Yeah, and, and Bill Wyrick's been attending along with me. Bill, we don't really have anything more until after Friday. Either. I think Friday's going to be. Yeah, so. All right. Okay, All right. we're up to date. Then. All right, well, we're up to date on that. <laughs> there we go. It was easy. Uh, item 7E discuss hiring a general manager for the OBGMA. Um, Russ, you have been working uh, on I have. that. So, um, why don't you tell us I what you I don't know how long ago it was. I, I saw John and his wife walking past me at the Ventura County Fair in August. And I said, hey, John, I've got an idea. <laughs> you could help us out at uh, OBGMA. And so he hired on as a consultant. Um, as things get more and more complicated for this agency, um, it needs um, direction, organization, and um, we can give Cece a little bit of help because now she's got her, her plate full with two GSAs. Uh, so the idea is to hire John as a um, consultant again, but with the title uh, as part-time general manager. John? Yeah, and um, I've sent an, a draft agreement over to Peter for review. Um, I'm not anticipating 
more than 20 hours a month. I mean, it's not a lot, and I'm not trying to bleed <laughs> the agency of, of funds. Um, but there's some questions that need to be answered, and Peter's reviewing the agreement. So the thought would be is I'd like to, once he gets a review of that, I'd like to get that to the board to review the agreement. I'll give you my resume in, in addition. And uh, if, you, if you desire, we can bring that back to the April meeting for your consideration. Okay. Anybody have any additional questions that they're going to want to make sure included in this contract that we may or may not know about yet? And we haven't reviewed what Peter's looking at, so is there any particular thing that we all know of from hiring in the past that we want to make sure we're dealing with? Just, 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 just blank slate. It's easy yeah. to go from Yeah. yeah. And, in front of you. and it, as Russ said, it's still considered a consulting agreement, so you're not on the hook for payroll and you're, you're not on the hook contract. payroll right. con taxes. I would end up playing self employment tax. Um, the difference is between my contract now and the one I'm asking you to consider, uh, I have formed an LLC. So. Um, so that'll be in there. Take advantage of that new tax law. <laughs> um, so then we'll carry this forward to the next meeting. Uh, and in the next meeting, you'll come with an agreement that Peter's drafted for us to review. Yeah, I'd like to get that out to you sooner than Get it to us in front of the agreement is so quickly. that we, yeah. it's not fresh to us when we first sit down here. That's probably the best way to go. I'll work with CC and we'll get that out to you. All right. Um, got a few minutes here. Item 7. F, which is the invitation to participate in the economic study of drought impacts. Now, I was given, uh, is this what I'm looking at right here, CC? No, that's, that's eight. Is that, that's down the road? That is this Oh, one you're right. right okay, I'll, okay, I apologize for that. Um, let's start with, uh, Bruce, do you have something you want to talk about on this? Is it, is you want to? You want to get us rolling here as to what we're talking, we're looking at? Update you on it. We, had, we thought it would be a really good idea to Just real quick, and it, I only do it because we're being recorded full names. So oh, yeah, Bruce Kubler. Them. I'm representing the Ventura River Water District. Uh, we thought it would be a good idea to help get a momentum going for connecting with the state water project to have some economic assessment of what would happen if the lake keep, continues going down and uh, might ultimately dry up or we might be in stage four or stage five for extended periods of time and what the economic effect that would have. So we sent a letter out to various people to uh, indicate our interest in participating in this kind of an econo economic study. We sent letters to the uh, Ohio Valley Inn, the city of Ojai, Miners Oaks Water Districts, the um, uh, Farm Bureau Federation, and uh, we've gotten response, positive response from Alex, Alex Kim at the Ohio Valley Inn is interested in participating. Um, John Christ has been out of town, just got back yesterday, so we haven't gotten a reply back from him. We haven't gotten a reply back from Miners Oaks yet either, but uh, I would just encourage, it seems like it's really important to get this information out, um, what the consequences could be if we're in these stage four and five for a long time. It might even help you folks in justifying your uh, groundwater desalter if you want to go that way in terms of as a level goes down, you've got to get rid of the poor quality water, makes more water available and uh, storage space and things. So anyway, I just encourage you to uh, participate with us to get some economic information out there so the community can understand what the consequence would be of this kind of a uh, serious situation. So is your agency going to lead that? We, we <coughs> took the initiative to get it going, so we're waiting now to get see what kind of support we can get from other agencies that have an interest in doing this. Who would be compiling the economic study? We would hire a consultant to do it. There was a consultant that did it for um, <coughs> Fox Canyon, I think they did a study. They paid twenty or thirty thousand dollars and uh, came up with some kind of an adverse effect if they didn't go ahead with certain kind of groundwater management plan. It could have a negative effect of something like a hundred million dollars on the economy of the, the county. So we would use a consultant like that, and we're looking at uh, maybe a cost of ten or twenty thousand dollars, maybe thirty. I don't know if we have five participants. It might involve between five or ten thousand dollars per participant. I think the City Council is going to be on your agenda sometime, that was my understanding. I don't know when that would be. It, has, it hasn't come to us yet, but it's, okay. a, it's a, clearly it's something that we're going to have to look at. Uh, everybody's going to have to look at uh, the, uh, over the next, all of the solutions that have been, I've seen so far, are over, you know, what, three, four, five years for the near term. and. Uh, the uh, what the Casitas information has been that if we end up in stage four and five, you know, that'll end down to be domestic water almost <laughs> exclusively. Uh, 
I mean, that's a huge impact uh, on the uh, the economy of the area. So somebody needs to be doing it. That. Uh, Russ. Yeah, uh, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Just an off the cuff idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Instead of instead of launching into a separate study, why don't you ask for the economic impacts of the drought be included in the notice of preparation for a draft EIR for the the um, uh, intertie, yeah, and let let Kennedy Jenks do it for you. Hmm, good idea. I think Bert's going to go to the meeting tomorrow night. Maybe he could bring that up. Good. Do we include any economic impacts in our in any of our reports that we do? I, I'm trying to recall if, if I've read anything. About about. Do we ever include any of that discussion when we're doing our, our groundwater report or we don't nope. get any of that? Okay. We don't. Does Casitas do any of that in their reporting? No. All right. And nope. then, so has anybody, has there ever been anything in the Valley that we can, any of us recall that's looked at this issue? Um, you know, the, 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 impacts, the impacts of drought in the Ohio Valley, is this the first time we've considered looking cost, at it? The cost analysis that Richard Hages just put out on the uh, Water Advisory Group's study had a little bit of that, but it isn't in depth. And um, I don't think it would get very far uh, by itself. It's too thin. All right. So does this agency have a desire to, you know, support what the Ventura River Water District wants to do? I mean, is it something that, you know, do we, do we feel we need to know the answer to this question? Well, I think a lot more information mm -hmm. is needed. I'm all for knowing it, but uh, I think... The credentials of who's putting it together are key in my mind to right. supporting it or not supporting it. Right. Who does the work and what the cost is is sort of. The, I yes, the idea would be to uh, for the participants that are interested in doing this, that we get together, have one member from each of the representative agencies, and get together and find a consultant or two and do some interviews and scope it out and do that. So it's. Um, you want to be a participant, you need to be involved with the study up front, I think, something like that. Yeah, no, I'm all for that. And, and uh, the final thing, the final, uh, it depends on what it is and who, who it is and how much, in my mind. Well, just as, a, as an aside, today at the Casitas Municipal Water District meeting, we had the notice of preparation uh, for an EIR for the intertie. Um, and... I brought up a, a, a few issues that um, would be relevant, uh, just like the one I suggested to you. Um, and I just had a senior moment and forgot what I was going to say. It'll come back in the shower later. Um, then I, what I suggest then is that, uh, Bruce, maybe you could pencil an outline out for what this is supposed to look like, bring it back to us so that we can have an idea of how you you know, do we have to offer up one of us is to, to, to be on a committee to talk about it and report back to the board, and then we'll make it an agenda item and, and, and look at whatever you bring to us so that we can have something to start looking at the details of that. <coughs> but we have a desire to have those answers, so if you could bring a way for us to get those answers and involve us, uh, we'll, we'll look at it. Well, uh, uh, Bert was looking for a response by March 20th. Can we at least say maybe for a potential give us a little bit more information. How's that? All right. Yeah, because it sounds like we got a we got a volunteer for you right here. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Um anything else we want to talk about on that particular subject? We're on sub, uh, item 7F. No. All right. Thanks item, for, thanks for bringing it forward though. Yeah, Bruce. appreciate that. Thank you. Uh item 7G would be uh our next meeting is scheduled for March 29th, 2018. Um, that's our regular scheduled meeting, right? That would be the last Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I And as I understand, you're going to adjourn this meeting to that date. Is that correct, CC? Is that not with Peter? That is Peter's. apparently right. I just want to make sure that I'm actually going to be in town. <laughs> um, Just get on an earlier flight out of Chicago. I'll get here. <laughs> I'm in Chicago that morning, but I'll get home. I'll get back by then. Uh, so that will work. If no one else has had a conflict with that because there's going to be a lot of things going on. So we're all good for the, that meet that particular time on that yes. meeting. Okay. What I'm going to do right now, because um, we're running up against our time, um, well, we actually could probably get through this. If you want to, 
real quick on item eight, which is notice of preparation of a draft environmental impact report. Who brought this? Who brought this to the? Uh, who brought this item to the agenda? It was uh, sent to us by the Ventura City. Okay. The city of Ventura. So basically, this is an FYI. Yes. All right. The um, comment period ends March 30th. Uh, today at the Casitas meeting, I brought up the fact that growth inducement was not is not going to be reviewed at all in the uh, potential impacts of this project. Um, and I also uh, mentioned that there are there ne needs to be alternatives in a, an environmental impact report. And the water advisory group um, project could be a, a uh, an alternative to this project. And also the um, um, state water project water through Santa Barbara and Carpinteria down the coast to the Casitas facility could also be another. Um, if you have any other ideas about um, potential impacts, and like um, Bruce just learned, he could probably put in the um, economic impacts of the drought uh, related to the project as well. Those are things that can be talked to tomorrow night at the city council meeting. And I believe it starts at 6, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, is, is this, a, it, it, is, does this agency desire or historically make comments to these types of EIR reports? No, I've just, never, I've never. So we just accept them, we, un we understand they are, we make it available to the public and let them know, and if they want to do something, they do, but we don't make any comments on this particular plan. All right. Then uh, we'll take it for information purposes only, unless there's questions regarding it. Okay, well, we got a few minutes here. Uh, are there any committee reports? Yeah, I have just a couple. Of, uh, so before we adjourn, adjourn, just one little thing I wanted to talk about getting on the agenda for next at some point, which would be the uh, presentation that we've all seen at least once from the, from the I've, I've lost their name and I apologize, uh, the, the, the presentation you saw regarding hook, the Three Sisters plan, for lack of a, a, a the more detailed word for it. Russ, what's the full name of this plan they're talking about? Water Advisory Group. The Water Advisory Group Board. has made a presentation. They call it the Three Sisters plan. I'd like to get it on the agenda for us to discuss it and, and either uh, support this concept or not support this concept. Uh, in order for us to do that, I think we all, do we, we may need to make that presentation to the board, even though all of us have probably seen it. Mr. Finch, have you seen this presentation? All right, so we'll need to make it so that we are, that you, so my suggestion is we bring them over here, we, we, we ask for an abbreviated presentation so that it's on the public record, we've all seen it, and then have an agenda item to determine whether or not we wanna support such a plan or not. Is there any dis any any problems with us putting that on the agenda that way? Well, you've had to sit through it again. Well, I've seen it twice, and you will have seen it for four or five times. All right, so that's an important plan. That's that's something that's come that's that's organically come to the surface by folks that are independent of, of the water boards and, and us. Uh, it's the same folks that put a lot of the same folks that put the Ojai flow together, and it's a proposal for figuring out how to get Casitas on. You, to get state water better allocated in the in the larger regional area is that a best way to best way to describe it I guess um, so we're going to put that on the tie in Cayagas there you go so we're going to put that on the agenda for the next meeting we'll get them in here for a presentation and then we'll have a discussion as to whether or not we want to support that going forward is there any other items that we need to discuss today or any other comments from the public this is an abbreviated meeting there's a few things we need to discuss but these next two meetings are going to be important for us. Whereas we're going to be having public comments on our draft, we'll get this presentation on the Three Sisters. We'll be seeing our final groundwater management plan. We'll be reviewing, uh, bringing on a new general manager. Uh, and I imagine that between now and then, uh, we'll have some better water news because of the rain. I suspect that we're going to get, looks like we're getting rain. So whoever's been praying is working. I guess that can be public policy. Even more um, on Tuesday. Even, yeah. yeah, even more on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, uh, before you adjourn, real quick, just yes, one minute. I uh, just want to make sure I understand what we're going to bring to you on the 29th, aside from the normal stuff. Uh, did you want to see this resolution of support on the county grant efforts? Is that what I understood? Yeah, we probably ought to take a look. We got a non binding, non binding. Yeah, yeah. We so might we as well get it in officially. Need to dig that up and figure out. Um, 
annual report we'll have in for the public, public. Uh, for you to, to consider and approve groundwater management plan public hearing and then um, your contract it, well i was thinking that wouldn't go till april but okay, that's up but to April's you it's fine uh, that's that, that's it's fine. up to you uh, fine. economic analysis and then you want to you want to look at this presentation by the water advisory group right and then you and i can regroup and make sure we get all the agenda items yeah, before we yeah. prep those. okay i just want to all right if there's unless there's any questions uh, we'll adjourn this meeting it is a uh, six it is 5 45. thank you for attending y'all have a good afternoon and evening thank you thank you gentlemen i hope someone's going to come pick me up because my son took my car <laughs> drove off with my truck and i got abandoned